Hello everyone, Bob here, and welcome to the Voice of the Movies. Uh, first, before I get into this today, I wanted to apologize about the lengthy downtime I've had on my channel lately. Um, as I said in my announcement, I am still in the process of moving. Um, although I could at any time start up my videos, I do lack the one important thing I need, and that is the internet to upload it. And the uh, Windstream, which is the internet company you basically have to go with where I live, uh, won't be able to be here until Tuesday. So fingers crossed, starting Tuesday, I can resume my daily uploads. But the only reason this one is going up today, this episode of Voice of the Movies, is because I uh, uh, escaped over to my brother's and um, used his internet for a little bit. I wanted to keep up my Saturday uh, regular repeat time of the uh, series. Um, today we are looking at uh, 1981's The Burning from Light in the Attic Records. I guess it's distributed from Light in the Attic Records. It's distributed by Light in the Attic Records. Uh, One Way Static uh, is the presser. This is the black version, and this was a, lim a limited run of only, there are only 200 of these worldwide. So let's see what the album itself looks like. Here is the album's artwork. Again, I apologize about using the top of this Klipsch Tower speaker as a table, but um, I haven't completely unpacked yet. And uh, here's the Obi. Uh, has some make has some interesting information about the movie. Uh, talks about uh, Jason Alexander of Seinfeld being in it, as well as a couple other uh, actors that are in it. Um, Tom Savini doing the makeup. Then down here it has some information about uh, Rick uh, Wakeman, who did the score and some of the other movies he did. And uh, just uh, some information in the back of the OB has some other stuff stuff from um, onewaystatic.com set this off to the side here flip the album over there's the artwork on the back track listing the copyright 2017 The album itself, um, the sticker on uh, the front side is just a standard uh, uh, center sticker, the burning. You flip it over, it's got the silhouette of Cropsy on it. Now the music in this film is mostly only uh, synthesizers and electric keyboard. Uh, it works well. Um, I want to point out uh, side A of this release is the Wakeman Variations and side B is music from the actual film. Uh, side A, the tracks on side A, and um, Sheer Terror was the best one, but a lot of them, they felt kind of like they were more out of a video game than a horror movie. I I mean, there wasn't anything wrong with them. They were good, they were good tracks, it's just they felt more video gamey. Now, the music from the actual movie, uh, it does a great job. It builds tension. It uh, conveys the horror of um, a, a Cropsy, like at the be beginning of the film, and, uh, and then, then the terror from his potential victims as he stalks them and seeks revenge for his uh, disfigurement. Uh, I chose this album to do today because it is, um, while I'm hitting on the Friday the 13th films, I felt like this being a, a similar and that it's also a summer camp film, it would be a good uh, soundtrack to feature in this week's Voice of the Movies. The track Campfire Story is actually um, the part of the movie where uh, uh, the, he tells the story of what happened to Cropsy to, to the other people at the camp. Uh, and the track called The Fire is, um, it sounds, uh, you can feel the building tension and most of it's, uh, synthesizers, 
they do a good job of building, you can tell it builds tension, it builds panic, it does a very good job of conveying what it needs to. Um, Devil's Creek Breakdown, it feels um, banjo-y, it's very, it's when they're getting ready to go on their, um, their raft trip in the movie, if you've seen it. And it's uh, a very much an, like an upbeat, banjo, outdoorsy, and, uh, very similar to um, the, if you've seen Friday the 13th, it's very similar to the music they play when um, Kevin Bacon's character and his girlfriend and uh, the other guy come to the uh, show up at Camp Crystal Lake. But overall, uh, it's a it's a good horror movie score. It's a good slasher score from the early '80s, and uh, like I say, pick it up. It's it's well worth it. Thank you so much for watching. I apologize about the uh, weird format. I'm just not settled in yet. I'll uh, we'll get we'll get there. It's I'm uh, between with everything going on right right now. I'm. Uh, it's taking a lot longer than I thought it would um, between uh, farming stuff and moving. It's just nothing. It's taking, I thought I'd be up and running internet wise by now, but I'm not. Uh, hopefully Tuesday. And uh, thank you so much for your patience. Follow me on Facebook or Twitter. Search for Bob the Film Guy. Um, if you like the content of this video, please give it a like. Please consider subscribing to this channel. And this is Bob signing off for now.